praise the Lord. Good evening and welcome to Ideas at Work and Beyond. It is with uh, a great sense of privilege that we have Mr. Rudy Marconi with us this evening. Thank well, you very much for coming. Nice um, to uh, in uh, complete openness, Rudy is a friend of mine. He's the first selectman of the town of Ridgefield and we appreciate very much you coming out. Um, we were talking a little bit. This is a rather historic time in the town of Ridgefield. Um, again, full disclosure, I'm on the Board of Finance. Mr. Marconi is the first selectman, the chief, op or the chief executive officer of the town of Ridgefield. And we just had a resounding thumping, if you want to look at it that way, well, with the budgets that we, pr we approved and put out to the voters. That's right. And by the way, the phone number here is 792-4101. That's the studio line. It'll ring right here, 792 792- 4101 and we want to hear from you so if you have uh, any questions now you're now's your time have at it please give us a call and uh, we'd love to hear from you um, just to start things off we sat through a lot of budget meetings many many we looked at the budget we tried to pare things down we get it down to a budget where the tax increase to the voters is 3.5 percent correct we're busy patting ourselves on the shoulders because, or patting ourselves on the back because we feel like, hey, that's you know pretty much in keeping with inflation. This right. should be fine. Right. And the voters come back. I have the votes right here, 1,388 for, 2,079 against, and almost exactly the same numbers both on the town and school side. Mr. Marconi, what happened? <laughs> I wish I had a crystal ball. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. I think what happened is that we're all experiencing similar situations, Marty. You know this in your home. Uh, when we pull into the gas station, we're seeing gas at $4 a gallon. When you yeah. fill up your fuel oil tank, the cost of fuel is incredible. We're experiencing those issues in our own budgets in the town and the schools. Uh, the cost of a head of lettuce uh, yeah. is higher than it's ever been before. People are upset. And when you go to the gas station, you can't go in and blame the poor attendant. He has no control over it. Uh -huh. You can't call your fuel company and say, I don't want that load of oil this month. I'm going to freeze. Yeah. Or you shut off my lights. I don't want to buy power anymore. You mm -hmm. can't do that. Yeah. With the towns, with the cities, and your municipality, you have the right to vote. And boy, did the people let us know. All right. so, so your feeling on all this is that it's just a sign of the times. Everything's going up in price. And this was a place where people could let their feelings be known. I think that's one one of it, mm -hmm. uh, one of the uh, issues that, that we're looking at here in general. Uh, for as many people you'll speak to, you'll get as many different interpretations mm -hmm. uh, of what this vote means. We had a meeting this morning of the Board of Selectmen to talk about our budget, the municipal side of the ledger. Right. How are we going to address this? What is our target? What do we think we can do? Where, where should we stop? How much money should we cut? Mm -hmm. um, it, and it's a serious issue because we had scrubbed this budget pretty well uh, through the multitude of meetings that, and the Board of Education did the same thing. Mm -hmm. uh, the Board of Finance did your public hearings and really agonizing over how can we bring a, a mill rate increase to the people that recognizes everything that I've already stated, mm -hmm. fuel, oil, gasoline, and everything. And we really did, as you so well put, we felt we did a good job by holding it down to that 3.5% increase. Would we have liked it to have been zero? Sure, but there are services that people also expect. And as someone said today, 23% uh, of the elected voters, or the electors in our town, I should right, say, right, right. Uh, voted. Right. There are a lot of people that didn't even vote. Mm -hmm. Are those people saying they don't care? Are those people saying raise it, lower it? We don't know. But mm -hmm. we feel there's a good percentage that feel, wait a minute, don't go crazy and start cutting our service, our ability to plow the roads, pave the roads, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And by the way, that was, in fact, the only question that did pass mm -hmm. was the road infrastructure uh, uh, question, which historically has always gotten the single largest number of yes votes. Mm -hmm. And on Tuesday, it passed by, I think, 41 votes. 41 votes. Barely. 17, But people are upset. People are very upset about the economy, what's going on. There are people that are making decisions about, you know, Maybe someone lost their job. Can they afford that house any longer? The costs are going mm -hmm. up. We're in serious times, and I think that vote reflected those right. feelings. Um, what about this? I mean, there was the article in the in the Ridgefield Press. And by the way, Mac Reed was hoping to be here tonight. Yes. But he's uh, he's um, he's at the board the, of education meeting. I just left just him gonna... there. I just walked out of there okay. a few minutes ago. But there's some there's some criticism here um, by uh, cr uh, Chris McQuicken. 
He says, um, you know, he's been an out, outspoken critic of the year's budget. He said, it's been in the mood of this town for the last few days. Days, He says, I think that there's a disconnect between the town leadership and the people. To think that there was an overwhelming support and praise for all the boards as this budget uh, made its way through the system. And then on voting day, the people shredded it. Something went wrong with the process. The town leaders... Uh, thought they were doing the right thing by the people, but obviously the people felt differently. Hopefully the next phase of the budget process, the leadership can really get in touch with the residents, not just their friends, but the rest of us. And well, by I the way, the phone number here, 792-4101. We want to get in touch with you. Call in. Now is an ideal time to uh, let your feelings be known, because I'm trying to make heads or tails of this. Right. But what do, you, what do you make of that criticism? That that. You know, the Board of Finance is busy saying, oh, you Board of Selectmen, you've done a great job. You know, you've kept the, the, rate, the tax increase to 3%. But meanwhile, that just didn't fly. No. Well, I have already alluded to some of those problems I think exist as far mm -hmm. as the letter to the editor. Uh, there have been letters to the editor for since 1989 when I first became an elected official yeah. about everything from A to Z. And people are going to write and offer their opinions, their feelings. Um, and certainly Mr. McQuilkin is... is uh, entitled to an opinion yeah. that is one person's opinion yeah. um, what we're trying to do is to respond to the entire town and I appreciate his his concern mm -hmm. uh, what his feelings are but had he and I don't know if he did mm -hmm. but we I know you did I mm -hmm. did attended many many meetings the budgetary process starts November December yeah. our meetings begin then we go through to the end of February into March with the Board mm -hmm. of Finance ending up toward the end of March, 1st of April. We were there at all the meetings. Mm -hmm. Seldom did we have very many people there. Yeah. The I have meetings a, were not well attended. I have a theory on that. Hold okay. on, there's a call. Caller, you're on the air. Hi, Marty. Lynn Waller. Oh, hi. Thanks How are for you? calling. Thank you. Um, I'm sorry to take you away from the budget. No, no, no. I had a question for, uh, for Rudy. Can you explain to the audience and to us why we should be so concerned with the new plans for the FAA and LaGuardia? I know you're leading the fight, and uh, I wondered if you could explain it to the rest of us so that more of us could get involved in this thing, because I really do think it's going to change our life. That, you know, that's a, because yeah, this, that's this show goes question, out, Lynn. it's primarily Danbury-focused, and that's something that, you know, relates to all of us. Th thank you for the call. Thank you. Um, uh, Lynn asks a very good question. Yeah. As you know, Marty, in the Board of Finance, we've had these discussions, and you know, thank you for your not support Danbury, on that. But we, we actually, today I was in Lawrence, New York, which is right next to JFK, oh. and they've got the big birds coming in one after another, and I was yeah. thinking to myself, is this how it's going to be out here? But anyways. And, and I don't think it is. Yeah, e I, well, if, it won't be that low, if, but. If the, if the airspace redesign, and that's what mm -hmm. this issue is about, an airspace redesign right. that is proposed by the FAA that would take current traffic landing at LaGuardia that mm -hmm. comes into what, through what they call the North Gate. I'm not a pilot. So I'm not going to be technically right on with mm -hmm. this, but for the layman, I am going to be pretty close. That north gate handles X amount of trips per day, and let's mm -hmm. say it's 150 to 200, mm -hmm. give or take. Their, the proposal, in order to accommodate traffic from Newark, JFK, LaGuardia, they're going to move traffic over in this north gate over Fairfield County. Mm -hmm. That will be the new approach through the north gate into LaGuardia Airport. That traffic will enter over the Bridgewater, New Milford, New Fairfield, Roxbury, Woodbury, somewhere in that area, and begin their descent into LaGuardia Airport. This is traffic that does not exist today. So if people are looking out and they see a plane, they say, oh, it started already. No, it hasn't. Okay. That's existing traffic. And perhaps the most significant impact of this airspace redesign will be the impact that it has on general aviation. Mm -hmm. General aviation being the Danbury Airport, Oxford Airport, mm -hmm. a lot of your east-west traffic that travels out of Stewart or wherever, Newburgh, mm -hmm. uh, over to New Haven, Bridgeport, and a lot of the helicopter, private uh, helicopter services right. that are around. All of that will be forced lower than the approximate 8,000 Six to eight thousand foot altitude. That's what it is right now. Now That's it's a six what to eight thousand. Told by the okay. FAA, anywhere from six to eight thousand. Mm -hmm. And in the closer you get to the sound, the lower it will be. And what we are saying is, if this has to happen, let's be sure it needs to happen. 
before we impact our quality of life, before we impact the environment here, before we generate severe questions about safety, which is what Senator Lautenberg and Menendez have done by putting a hold on the plan in the greater Philadelphia, New Jersey area. Okay. We want to be sure that we're taking the same precautions. Has the FAA mm -hmm. exhausted all the alternatives? Have they, in fact, done their due diligence? We have requested five to six items under FOI. Mm -hmm. And you know, as an elected official in Richfield, what an FOI is. Yeah. You get an FOI, Freedom of Information for the General Public. We have to respond within four days to the person inquiring about the information. And then within that four-day period, mm -hmm. have an additional response uh, soon thereafter about when the information will be available. It's very strict and there's a very definite guideline in how we have to respond. The FAA simply said we're not responding because of the litigation, sorry. Oh, okay. Which is totally unacceptable. Chris Shays, our mm -hmm. congressman, our, yeah. our congressman from the 4th Congressional District, right. asked for the same information, was told, sorry, we're not making it available to you. A congressman being denied information wow. by the wow. FAA, there is something mm -hmm. wrong here. Absolutely. This is a bureaucracy that has gotten way too large for itself, and it needs to be put in check. The GAO, the Government Accounting Office, is doing a, an investigation into the due process. Was due process followed by the FAA? Um, for Lynn's question, what is the impact? The impact will be more noise, mm -hmm. impact on the environment, questions about safety. Okay. We have filed a lawsuit on this. Let me be the devil's advocate on this. Go ahead. In this time of, of budget constraints where they're trying to cut the budget and cut spending, what are our chances of prevailing in this lawsuit which we're joining that question has been asked through every community okay and, and how many communities are party to the lawsuit? right though? now there are 10 Fairfield County communities okay. and Pound Ridge New York for a total of 11 okay um, we are bridge well excuse me that's gone up by one Bridgewater just joined okay. they had their town meeting last week and voted to go ahead they and did. join yes they okay. did okay. And, and they'll each be contributing town is spending proportionately Yes, on based and on their demographic. In Richfield? in Richfield, it was $69,000. Okay. So $69,000, and we're joining this lawsuit in hopes of re reverting this, uh, this flight path into LaGuardia, into the, all mm -hmm. the New York uh, um, airports. What are our chances of prevailing? Well, our chances of prevailing are, you know, whatever you can get an attorney to say, your chances are. And you know right. what that's like. And to ask an attorney, what do you think our chances of prevailing are, mm -hmm. could be, well, 50-50. I don't know. It's, yeah. it's a, there's no, I'm not going to lie to you, it's, it's an uphill battle. We're going up against the FAA, uh -huh. but this is the first time in the history of the FAA that they have had so many petitioners filing suits against them. Okay. And what is important here is that this is a template mm -hmm. that is being implemented or trying to be implemented in the greater New York area, Philadelphia area, okay. if successful, it will be marched across the country to Chicago, to Dallas, to L.A. Right. It is not just going to be happening here. And the rest of the country needs to wake up and, and pay attention to what's going on because this can have far-reaching demographics. Okay. Or, uh, the other side, again, not to be the devil's advocate, but the other side, some people who have been in the airline industry for many years have said the FAA has done its homework. Yeah. They followed the rule I, uh, and that it's kind of like... I will say, I don't want to spend all night on this, but uh -huh. uh, the FAA has done an excellent job in providing safety for the people who travel by air. Yeah. Uh, we are looked upon most favorably by the rest of the world yeah. as a leader in safety and as a leader in providing the best possible uh, air, air uh, passenger service that mm -hmm. a, a country can provide. What we're saying is there's no rush here. Right. Let's go back, take a look at it and see if there are alternatives. The last thing I wanted to say, Mary Peters, Director of Transportation for the Federal Government, okay. just recently Im implemented flight caps. You got a lot caps, of information. You're like on top of this stuff. Uh, flight caps and uh, possible congestion pricing, all of which has a big impact on traffic. If right. that's the case, we are asking the FAA to do a supplemental report. What is the impact of that? Mm -hmm. And with these changes, which has a big impact on the issue we're talking about, which are delays at the airport, right. which no one likes. Right. No one likes. Um, what is the impact that those flight caps are going to have? Right. Is it going to reduce traffic? If so, if so, do you still need to transfer all this traffic over to Fairfield County? Because if you don't, 
please don't. Let's take it one step at a time. Yeah. The last suggestion is, do we really need more planes stacked in the air? Because we're not improving, we're not increasing the amount of concrete on the ground. Okay. And if we want to provide more and more service, we definitely have to put more concrete on the ground. Okay. An exhaustive answer to Hopefully the issue of helps, the FAA. Lynn. Hopefully that helps. Okay. Back to the budget. Uh, thank you. Back to the budget. Um, where do we go from here? Um, I think at this point, uh, well, you said in the paper, the people, of Ridgefield, the people of Ridgefield want to greatly reduce the budget, and that's what we, and that's what they will get. That was your quote in the Ridgefield Press. What does that mean exactly? How much of a cut? What's going to get cut? Well, let me Is tell that you. That's something we can even talk about right now. Sure. Right? Well, okay. you know, the I mean, Board of Finance general. has yet to meet. You're the chairman yeah. of the Board of Finance. Well, we're going to be meeting next um, Tuesday. We had our town meeting right after, during, right after the referendum. Mm -hmm. We reconvened our town meeting, right. and there was a lot of discussion about. What are we doing from here? Does the Board of Finance want to give us a cap, give what, us a what, number? What, what, what are, are we what working towards? What are some toward? of the concerns you're hearing from citizens? Okay, the vote was voted down. Yeah. Now everyone's going back to the drawing board. Mm -hmm. What are some of the concerns you're hearing from, from voters? Hey, don't, you know, don't take this program. I like that. Don't take this. Uh, boy, we were in favor of getting the asbestos out of the schools. That got voted down. Right. What are we going to do about that? Mm -hmm. um, what are you hearing? It was across the board. There are many, many programs that are going to affect a multitude of special interest groups. Yeah. And everyone's concerned about their individual project or their yeah. individual concerns. Why is it, can we bring it back? The Board of uh, Selectmen met this morning. We had a yeah. meeting at 8.30 this morning. Uh, it lasted for three hours, and we began our work on the budget. Okay. Um, when we went, we first went around the uh, table and asked you had the for, department heads there, you had members of the well, board we did, of What we did is we did a staff meeting at 11 o'clock. So okay. our board of select meeting, board of selectmen's meeting rolled into uh, having a lot of the stat department heads okay. at the end of the meeting. However, they didn't participate. They were they were listening. Because, were they a little forget, concerned? They're I all mean, concerned. Is the, is they're the fire very, chief very concerned, concerned about the new fire truck? Fire, is, fire uh, chief, well, the ch truck is out. Yeah. The truck is out, yeah. um, as are the highway truck is out, and all of the capital projects, yeah. other than the roads and the infrastructure What about the pool? There's talk of out. The pools out. Pools out. So where's the I high mean, school we're going to keep it open. Gonna... We're keeping it open. We're just not fixing it. The pool yeah. is in. Yeah. Um, as far as our decisions moving forward today, that was one of our topics. Do we close Barlow Pool? That was a big discussion. It has been every budget cycle. You know any, that. Any decision on that? Uh, the decision was we had to keep it open because yeah. once you close that pool, we can count on it being closed forever. Your joints, your valves are going to rust up. Uh, it, it, yeah. it creates an Andy. Yeah, just, Andy not, Bodner was in agreement with this as a member of the Board of Selectmen. Yeah. He's had pools. He knows if we shut down a pool, uh -huh. it's shut down forever. Okay. Then you got to kind of look at it from the other point of view then. If we get to the point where I guess the big question is how much is enough as far as a cut to go back to the voters who have just overwhelmingly um, voted against what some people have considered a rather modest increase in taxes. Are they, if they're not in favor of a 2 point, or rather a 3.5 percent increase, how, are they going to be any more enthusiastic about a 2.5 well, percent or 2 percent? I, I don't know. I guess time will tell on that. Yeah. Uh, but what we did today is we discussed some of the uh, debate that took place at the town meeting. All right. Um, are we looking for a reduction of one mill in the mill rate, one percent? Do we want to go from a 3.5? Okay. Well, let's just five? let's just let's just talk for a minute. And, and again, it's just you know us talking here, but. If there was a 1% reduction in, in the mill rate, so the, the tax increase instead of being 3.5 is 2.5, mm -hmm. is that going to be resoundly defeated? I think you were quoted in the paper as saying, once a no vote starts, often in communities across the state there's been a second and a third no vote. That's right, so, and we've seen that across the state of Connecticut. I, and I don't know if the people of Richfield, and as I said, time will tell. Yeah. What I think we have an obligation to do, mm -hmm. and that was discussed in our Board of Selectmen's meeting, mm -hmm. and, I, and I hope the Board of Education does it tonight, is on this first round of cuts that we've made. And we right. made $100,000 cuts in some of the capital items that were put into operating, right. which was question number three. Mm -hmm. We reduced that from 304 down to 204. And then we took our operating budget for the government town government and reduce that another two hundred thousand okay. dollars in order to go beyond that it is critical and very important for the people of Richfield to understand that the next round in all likelihood will begin to include 
people reductions. We will be laying people off. We will be affecting uh, town services. Already, we're on the verge. You know, if we're not getting that truck and the old truck that's 22 years old, the Mack truck, is yeah. just an example, and you've gone down and looked at them. Well, they, it's see, not as if we're getting rid of new trucks. <laughs> These trucks are over 20, 22, 23 years old. Yeah. There are issues with them. If that truck breaks down this winter mm -hmm. and a road doesn't get plowed, people are going to be told this is what happens when you vote mm -hmm. down equipment. We can't I'm not, that's not a threat, and I don't I mean it that way, yeah. but there's a potential of that happening. Could it happen? Yes. Will it happen? I hope not. All right, and maybe me, nothing let, Again, let me be the devil's advocate here, because there's a perception out there. There's a perception that, hey, look, times are tough. I've had to make cutbacks on my family's budget. Um, why can't the town make cutbacks as well? We have. Okay, but... We uh, have. If let, you let, look, just, let me just, here, don't listen. You're, you're chairman of the Board of Finance. I understand, <laughs> I, know, I understand that. But let me, let me just say, uh, this is from uh, Jan Rifkinson. I, don't know I know Jan you, very well. Okay. She said, February 28th, the uh, press headline captured my attention. Why did voters kill the field plan? And a $200,000 uh, revised board backs a 5.5% increase, talking about the Board of Ed budget. It seems some folks just don't get it. The first school budget headline, a $200,000 revision in a $76 million budget. Let's see, that's a reduction of 0 0.00263, and then she runs the mm -hmm. numbers all the way out. He does. Oh, I'm sorry, he does. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the idea is, is we're saying, hey, we're really cutting a lot. We cut $200,000. They're going to plug that into, well, it's a $121 million budget. Mm -hmm. This isn't a reduction at all. And that's a perception out there. I don't know well, how we can, well, you know, it, it, get well, around that. You're, well, coming up with an answer to that question is a little different than trying to explain to people where we started with our, our budgets. Yeah. Um, there were a huge requests. I mean, the, the list went on and on. Our first pass, we were working on, you know, maybe uh, without the police station. Mm -hmm. If you took that out of our capital, we were we ended up at roughly, what, $4 million, mm -hmm. plus mm -hmm. or minus. Um, that list was originally at $10 million. Okay, $10 well. million. We went through. I had to sit down with every department head, go through those cuts. The operating. Operating was huge. We had to cut all that back. People need to realize that there's a lot of work that goes into delivering the budget. Mm -hmm. And when we sit down together in our joint meetings, and you will agree with this, our effort is what do we think the people are willing to accept? We knew much over 3.5% in all likelihood wasn't going to fly. We need to figure it out. Yeah. You graciously, in, agree, in your group, in your, in your commission agreed, let's take a million out of our fund balance to help get that number down. Yeah. I mean, and, that, that, and we that's, work together on That's kind of standard. To me, it's, it seems like the most efficient way to return. We, we, we had a million dollar surplus. Okay, we didn't spend it. Let's use it to hold the taxes down next year. That's right. kind of what you were doing. In a, yeah, in a sense, it's returning. If there was any overtaxation, it's, right. it's the most efficient way to return that to the mm -hmm. to the townspeople. But, but I just I just get the sense that um, if if three point five percent didn't fly, why do we think two point five percent? It is may not. Fly? But okay, the people and, need to know if it doesn't what we're going to be cutting next. And if we begin to cut services, you have to expect. The roads won't get plowed perhaps as efficiently or yeah. as quickly. There are going to be sacrifices that are going to be made. Yeah. And if the people of Richfield want us to do that, fine, we'll do that. All and I, then vote no the next round. Okay. All, all, and, and, you know, I don't mean to, you know, because we're kind of, <laughs> for better or worse, we're uh, in this thing together because I'm on the Board of Finance. You're, sure you're the, are. You know, and, and I looked at this budget and, and I, I tried to find any economy of scales, any efficiencies. The last car I drove, I drove to 263,000 miles. My current car has 193,000 miles. I like to think I'm frugal. I like to think I'm fiscally conservative and want to be able to, uh, you know, get the most out of any dollar that you we know, possibly can. Squeeze every bit of juice out of the uh, Yeah, orange. absolutely. And when you talk about cars that are being replaced, this isn't gilded cars for people. These are 22-year-old cars. Well, this um, is a 22-year-old Mack truck. Truck, yeah. And so. I guess at, at some level, townspeople, voters of Ridgefield, realize that these budgets have been gone over. Now, that being said, yeah, it could be a call, it could be. That being said, 
I'm telling you, when you say people aren't showing up to the meetings, the town meetings, and they're not expressing their concerns, they are on the internet. The RidgefieldLive.com, which I've been studying, and a lot of these votes are coming from, there is an active group out there that's talking quite a bit about it, and here might be one of them. <laughs> Caller, you're on the air. Uh, good evening. Uh, I just got in a short while ago. don't know whether Mr. Marconi made or had any discussion relative to what had happened at the Board of Selectmen's meeting this morning and whether, in fact, the board had decided to uh, reduce their budget request and how much that reduction would have amounted to. Yes, I, did. I, I have been talking about that. Uh, we met as a Board of Selectmen this morning and we reduced our budget by $300,000. 300000 out of a $44 million budget? That isn't even one-tenth of one percent. This is what I'm saying. Didn't I tell you that? Uh, Gloria, I understand what you're saying, but... Uh, but let me ask you a question, Rudy. You know who it is, and I'm not trying to hide from anyone. I have okay. questions to ask, and I'm sorry I wasn't there this morning, but I had to be at work. If, if there is that reduction of $300,000, what did you reduce? Uh, we reduced, and I'm going to be trying to recall, I do not have it written down in front of me, for, so please excuse me if I can't give you every single detail. But in general, we took the uh, $304,000 request, that was question number three, and reduced that to $204,000. And in that, we reduced computers by $40,000. We reduced policed cars. Uh, the black and whites in a lease car was a $93,000 budget. That was reduced... Uh, 50,000, so there's 90,000, and we took another 10,000 that was sl slated to repair school doors, which is our responsibility in the town uh, for school buildings. We cut that, or we eliminated it completely, 10,000. So there was a $100,000 decrease there. We then went over to the operating budget of the town and reduced that by approximately $200,000. Major cuts there were Founders Hall, the library, um, let's see, and then we did each department. We did Parks and Rec, twenty-five thousand. We did Parks and Rec, twenty-five thousand dollars. My, that's we, magnanimous. I'm sorry, Gloria, Rudy, Gloria, that, are, well, I'm, I'm just. Are. You asked a question. Let me, let me just ask, let me just ask you a question. Um, what do you think would be a a realistic, given the times, given the economic condition we all find ourselves in? What do you think would be a realistic? budget going forward would but i would i would think and i'm not i i'm not going to give you figures because there's no way i can give you figures i don't have the budget in front of me i don't have the individual department okay okay but what i mean coming but, back because this is going to come up on uh given on, the economic conditions that we are presently in right and it looks like this is going to be not a short term thing this is going to be a reasonably long process we have to open up the contracts again people we've got to start looking at salaries we've got to start looking at benefits you know i cannot go to my employer and demand of my employer a five percent increase every year and expect that i'm going to get it we don't have we any all, no, we, we don't have unions at getting five percent increases of fuel oil i had to purchase fuel oil, oil the other day uh, and almost fell out of my chair when i had to pay four dollars and 25 cents a gallon Go, okay, Gloria, but, i had uh, already discussed all of that prior to i guess you're sorry in. i just got as i said i just got in yep. there are but, things that have to be looked at which we refuse to look at okay but let me just get back to, to my question then i got to go to the other caller what what would what are you looking for? You, you know, we're elected officials. Are you saying you, zero increases? I'm saying everything has to stay exactly the way it was. It okay. does. Well, then that means there are no raises, nothing. We don't, we don't increase, you know, the same thing you're experiencing at home, we're experiencing in town. The cost of fuel for the trucks, diesel fuel is now at four fifty eight a gallon. Does that mean we don't pave roads this year? Does that mean we do not plow the roads this year? Our fuel for our schools, for our town buildings, is going out of sight, as you're experiencing at home. Do we shut down but our... But you see, Rudy, I cannot put Can my I hand finish? in someone else's pocket to pay my bill. Can I okay. finish? Sure. Uh, if the people want us to do that, then please recognize that those will be the results because I have a feeling what will happen is if we do do that and we don't pave the roads, if we don't uh, plow them in a timely fashion and have them clean up because, Gloria, I can tell you the calls I get during the winter as to why my road isn't plowed yet, why the ice is still there, how come you haven't salted, I need better service. 
go on uh, and on. The only on thing that passed on. in this budget, Rudy, and only passed by roughly what forty votes. Forty-one. But shall the town appropriate one point two three four million for various town road and infrastructure improvements and bond that amount of money? That's the only thing that passed, and that says that the people of this town are interested in one thing and one thing only. They have to be able to number one leave their home and get to work so that they can pay their bill. Okay. Gloria, Gloria, well, hold on, look, we got, that doesn't uh, cover the operating. And our fuel and our electricity is all in our operating. You can't have one without the other. Sorry. All right. But, Carl, generally, again, broad strokes, you'd like to see a zero increase budget. And, and I think you're going to find that most of the people who came out and voted and defeated this budget yeah. are exactly looking for that. Yeah, that's kind of my, I mean, as I look into, you talked about at the beginning, if you have a crystal ball, you know, when, when and if we come back and it's some somewhere, you know, 1% cut, I'm not, I, I'm not sure that that'll fly. And what you're saying is a zero increase is, is this what is one. Be. This is one person's opinion. Okay, all right. Thanks a lot for the call. I appreciate Thank it you. very much. You feeling good? I'll take that as a yes. Caller, you're on the air. Thanks for calling. Marty, hi. I'm not a Ridgefield resident, but I share a glory of pain. Okay. And Mr. Marconi, I think you're being dishonest. You're being typical. Uh, typical uh, this? Um, you're, you're saying... Oh, we're gonna. You're not gonna get your roads plowed unless you vote yes. Just don't give us that nonsense. You know, baloney. You can get rid of phony town jobs. Wh which cheap. which town do you live in, sir? Oh, it doesn't matter. It's irrelevant because yeah, it we, does we to all me. have the same. Are you because aware? I said, that Marty, in a previous show, I was talking about Jesus. we're get, they're getting rid of the the, the uh, personal property tax in Florida because they have a strong conservative Republican legislature. Yeah. Former Mayor of Danbury says, well, how are they going to pay for services? Guess what? They're getting rid of thousands of phony state and county jobs. They gave the people the choice. You could have a few people that are lucky enough to have civil service jobs with dollar one medical payments, medical plans, and the people... Okay, so to, su to kind of sum up your point, you feel like, uh, hey... Don't, don't scare the people by saying we're going to cut teachers or not have your roads and libraries can be closed. I didn't say anything about teachers. Rudy, I have to be able to speak. Marconi, hold on. No, I can't. I'm sorry. You don't live in Ridgefield. That's irrelevant. It's, I would because like we to have... know where you live, and you won't even tell me that so I can talk about your town a little bit. Well, we have problems in Beth. Gloria, if you want to find do something smart, go to Google Earth Live and yeah. see when the town... Hey, we, got a, we have please. other this callers, is, but I want to... I want to try to keep yeah, it on. Kind of phony uh, town we, jobs, people with patronage jobs, or people. It doesn't matter if it's Reading or Ridgefield. <laughs> okay. All right. I, we we got we got your gotcha. point. Okay, you won't get rid of phony say jobs. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thanks for calling. Hang in. Um, it's tough. Tough being a public servant. Uh, call. You're on the air. I think, or you're going to put us on hold. All right. Is well, this out of the same party. I, I don't know. No, he, he's <laughs> um he he calls the show uh, periodically, but. At, at some point we gotta. At some point we really have to. We gotta listen to these people because we cause, listen to them every day. You gotta sit in my office. <laughs> okay, all right. Um, you think I'm not listening? I, we're, Don't we're li imply that. Okay, we're not. We're listening. If but, anyone but listens, we think we, we think we're trying to provide for the. You're, you know, you're the chairman of the board of finance. That's right. And you're telling me we have to listen. So are you saying that we should have a zero percent increase in the budget? Well, I'm saying that if the next time out. You know, we do these cuts that you're talking about doing. And well, it goes it's, it's out not and it just, gets overwhelming. It's coming to you Tuesday okay. night, and you have a decision. You can very easily say, as the chairman of the Board of Finance, yeah. I don't agree with this. I think we should be cutting more. I know. Will you say that? I don't know. I, I, I'm going to sit down and confer as a board, and I don't yeah, speak Yeah, but you have, you're an elected official as an individual. Yeah. As I, am I, okay. and this is what these people are saying to me as an right. individual. I am asking the same question to you. Are you willing to go to a 0% increase in the budget? If this gets voted down one more time, the answer is yes. If it gets yes. voted down, but we're going to have to open up contracts. Mm -hmm. You can't do it in three, four days. Oh, I understand that. that I understand. I understand process. the idea of so opening up a contract. What it but means is we have a zero percent increase. We recognize the fact that we're not going to do any increases for this year. Mm -hmm. We reopen all of our contracts, and this budget that we have in the current year will roll over into the next fiscal, mm -hmm. pending the outcome with negotiations. If that's the case we have to have a target. We ha I can't negotiate a blind number. Mm -hmm. You need to give us a target. The Board of Finance, if you want to do this, mm -hmm. has to be prepared to say, this is the number you have to meet. Because Tuesday night after the referendum, we asked, I personally asked, will the Board of Finance tell us 
a number. Give right. us where you think we should be. There's no one individual, despite what some of the callers may think, that's responsible for this budget. We do it in a collective process. Yeah. It is a vote of the Board of Education, the Board of Selectmen, the Board of Finance, and eventually and ultimately to the people of Richfield. Mm -hmm. They make the final decision. Right. So my question to you is, is the Board of Finance going to be giving us a number? Yeah, the Board of Finance will be giving you a number at the end of business on, on Tuesday evening, May 20th. That okay, will be the number. Okay, because we've had our meetings. You didn't give us a number Tuesday night. No, because the idea is the... So the, people need to realize that. Yeah. We were left on our own. Do what you think you have to do, I That's think right. were your words. Yeah. You take, make the decision. You decide what you feel the cuts are that we can do. We did that today. We did what you asked. So, and I want the callers to understand that we're responding. Mm -hmm. What we have done is to what the Board of Finance has asked. Right. If the Board of Finance says no, we don't like what you've done, you got to give it back to us and we'll cut more. Mm -hmm. Well, that, that's the process. The, pro the, the idea is the Board of Finance didn't want to go, well, look, you know, cut 5% of your budget, go to it. We wanted to say, you look in your budget, see where there's areas where there can be economy of scales, where there mm -hmm. are areas of savings, and then come back to us with the best you can. And that's Same what thing we're with doing. Keith Miller. You asked us to doing. do that. It seems that's like what the, the Board only, of Education is doing, doing tonight. It. it doesn't seem to appease some of the callers. Well, no, what, what the caller was saying. And you seem to be asking me, no, no, what, what are you going to do to answer these callers? No, what I'm saying is we need to listen to these callers. We need to listen to the over 2,000 people that voted down both the Board of Ed budget and the the town budget. We, we have are. To. I know. I know you are. That's, and that's why we're going, going back. We're reworking the budget and we're bringing something back. Here's some more of these callers. Maybe. I think uh, you know good evening. Who they Thanks are. for calling. <laughs> Hi, Morty and uh, Rudy. It's Mike Morty. Hi, Mike. Uh, question about the process. I just want to make sure. In the end, the Board of Finance will determine the cut that will be seen by the voters in the next vote. Yes, and by the way, the next vote tentatively is scheduled for June 3rd, Tuesday, June uh, 3rd. Correct me if I'm wrong. Well, the next, yes, but the Board of Finance meeting is May 21st. May 20th. May tu 20th, excuse me. Tuesday evening, May 20th, and yes, you are correct. We will come up with the number. And uh, is the next, uh, is it going to be a town meeting vote or a referendum? There will be a Board of Finance meeting next Tuesday. On the 27th, there will be a town meeting. And this morning, the Board of Selectmen uh, argued uh, extensively about the need to bring this to a referendum. I have contacted our bond council, Robinson and Cole. Based on our changes to the charter, Mike, uh, our char last charter revision, we removed the need to go to a referendum uh, on a budget revote. We had our first referendum, it went down. Our budget says, our budget now, our charter, excuse me, now says that we go to a town meeting for approval. The Board of Selectmen said, given the severity of this vote and the, the, the immensity of this issue, we have to bring this back to the referendum. If our charter were to not allow that because we changed it, the town meeting would be an all-day event, giving people an opportunity throughout the day to go in at 6, 7 o'clock in the morning and to vote throughout the day with our conclusion. It's a hybrid referendum uh, with or a town meeting with the conclusion coming at 8 o'clock that evening. Um, we're going to be working with uh, town count or uh, bond council on that issue. I hope I haven't confused you. No, it, that was a great answer, and I, I think that's definitely a way to go forward. Uh, I think a simple town meeting would be difficult with the uh, right. LV issue. Yes. And I also wanted, before I hang up, is to thank you and Marty. I think it was a great job this year, and I fully supported the budget you gave us this year. Hey. I know you're surprised, Marty. It's probably the first time you heard that from me. No, I, I appreciate it because, really, I mean, you know, it's interesting after this vote, uh, of all things, people, uh, some guys I play hockey with, you know, I go into the locker room to get ready to play hockey, and they're like, oh, Marty, oh, boy, you must be, you know, feeling hammered. <laughs> and, and to be honest with you, you know, as, as, and I probably Mr. Marconi feels the same way, as public servants, you try to do your best to reflect what the will of the people is. That's what we tried to do on this budget. The people have spoken, and we have to respond to it. And that's, that's what right. we're trying to do. Uh, it's I not agree, but you guys should be congratulated for the effort you do. And I think it was a good budget this year. <laughs> Thanks, and man. Thank you for it. Thank right. you. Thanks a lot. Um, yes, call. you're on the air. Sorry for the delay. Uh, a couple of questions. Uh, I read on the Ritual Press uh, website that the, uh, the uh, Board of Selectmen proposed budget now is being, um, you know, um, knocked down by about three hundred thousand dollars 
And only $10,000 being um, knocked out of the uh, police uh, department budget. Still yet to be determined what will happen with the uh, Board of Education side. But uh, I am, in a way, sort of surprised that the budget was uh, defeated. However, when it comes to the police department and the uh, need, of course, to improve their site, the problem here now in Richfield, and I've heard a number of stories about what's going on with the uh, a ritual police department. It definitely is under fire. Now, the question is, with a three-to-one vote against, you know, the renovation, now the question is, what needs to be done to change the attitude? Obviously, the attitude in town and Richfield is very negative about Richfield police. So I'm going to leave you with a question. Okay. Uh, no, it needs question. to be investigated, obviously, uh, but what needs to be done? Do we need to hire somebody to come into town to find out really what's going on? Why is it that people don't support the Richfield Police Department? I mean, there are horrible stories going on. Um, that needs to be looked into. So basically, that's the, uh, the issue of my question, and that is, what are we going to do to deal with Richfield Police and its image, which is now poor, very negative, a failing image in the town of Richfield. I leave right. that to you, Marta Heiser and uh, Selectman Marconi. All right, thank but you. Thanks for yeah. the, the sure. question. Um, how, do we, how do we fix the image of the Richfield I, Police Department? You know, Chief Legey answers this question uh, in an interesting way. Uh, the fire department responds, and everyone loves the firemen. They're yeah. a great group of people because they're responding to you when you're in need, when yeah. you're in your health. They're there to help you. Yeah. The police department often show up when you really don't want their help. Yeah, now, yeah, often, yeah. whether it's a ticket, whether it's a dispute, they're there to enforce the law. They're, they're, they're <laughs> their focus is different than uh, the fire department, and as a result, people are going to have a negative image. Having said that, there's no doubt that the police station going down 9 to 2 uh -huh. um, was heard very, very loud and clear. That project is now stopped. It is on the shelf. Mm -hmm. I don't think anyone's going to dispute that. Um, but I disagree with the caller's uh, characterization that there's a lot, there are a lot of issues in our police department. Um, I think they do a wonderful job for the town. Are there people who are dissatisfied at times? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, are there yeah, people who feel that there, there's a potential harassment here or there? We hear that all the time. But I don't think we're unique. Uh, as is implied with the call. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I tend to agree with that. Um, I, I don't know. I, I have nothing but praise for the Ridgefield Police Department. I don't think a negative vote on, on that expansion in a, in, a, in a vote that was overwhelmingly defeated across the board, right. primarily due to economic issues, should be interpreted as an indictment any more than Correct. voting down the fire truck should be an indictment of the fire department. Correct. But let's move on. Uh, Caller, you're on the air. Sorry for the wait. Good morning, guys. Great job, guys, by the way. It really is a uh, very informative thing, and uh, you do a great job. I am a resident of Richfield and probably one of the two people that voted yes for the budget. Uh, <laughs> now this, uh, I've met them both. <laughs> There's the other guy. Okay. <laughs> I just uh, had one question, uh, you know, because obviously, like, even the last caller, as long as it doesn't affect them, it's it's a matter of, uh, you know, it, it should be cut. And obviously, if you're going to the rec center, you want the rec center budget increased. Mm -hmm. If you're not going to the rec center budget, you want a decrease. My question would be is, is, do you have any historics of any other towns that shot down their budgets, reduced it, let's say, to a 0% or something like that, and what happened I, two, three, four, five years out? I have, I have an anecdotal story. Again, it was a guy I was talking to today who lived in Mayo Pack. And in Mayo Pack, their Board of Ed budget was voted down twice. And so the Board of Ed went back and just cut out a million point six dollars and had no after school activities, mm -hmm. no drama, no sports, no anything. And this particular guy, um, along with John Malloy of Mayo Pack, New York, uh, put together uh, some concerned residents and raised one point two million to save sports in Mayo yeah, Pack. That's amazing. But uh, you know, you hear some pretty draconian things, and I'm not trying to scare anyone. Um, uh, I'm really not. I'm just telling you this happened in Mayo Pack. There, there's no question. Um, when you begin you making go? cuts, you're going to begin, whether it's the Board of Education or whether yeah. it's the municipality, and, there, and the first caller said, you know, zero. Um, but there will be the first ones, believe me, that will call when the ambulance isn't there, when there's a delay in responding. Yeah, but it's, it's huge. And I, it, I, it, they're saying that's a scare tactic. What else are we going to do? You have, if you're going to cut mm -hmm. people, 
we have firemen, we have policemen, we have highway workers, yeah. we have people in the community development, we have people in town hall, tax collectors, okay, but town Rudy, clerk, to be, Again, to be the devil's advocate on this stuff, what they, what they will say is they'll say, hey, look, we're making cuts in our budget. We're not going out as much. We're not taking the big vacation. We're keeping the car another year. Uh, you know, my, I mean, there are people that they're, they're 70% of their pay is in bonuses, and they're not getting that bonuses. People are taking cuts in pay. So they're rightfully saying, hey. It, because you know, they're making the assumption that we're not doing any of that. I, I understand that, and I, I guess in this show we're trying to point out that, look, we're, we're replacing <laughs> a 22-year-old Mack truck. If you don't um, want to replace it, fine, but understand okay. the consequences All right, but what they're, saying, what they're saying is, yeah, we get it, but it's not like the sky's going to fall if you guys do a 2% cut. You know I think what? that's what they're saying. We did it, and you know what? The budget cuts we made today, the $300,000, mm -hmm. are not. To answer the caller's question with respect to uh, have we done any, have any historical data, no, I do not. Um, I don't know what the impact would be of a cut going out four or five years. I can tell you that by eliminating our capital projects, or reducing them to the $1.23 million mm -hmm. for the roads and infrastructure, it reduces greatly that debt service climb going out three, four, and five years. That helps. And that has a huge impact because your, your interest increases as you go you. on. <laughs> it helps. This is a midterm correction. Yeah. And I don't have a problem with it, but these guys, if, these if we guys continue in the operating side yeah. to cut, 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 there are going to be consequences, and that's all I want to say. It's not a threat. I'm not, I'm not trying to drive a lot of traffic to this RidgefieldLive.com. But, but you are. <laughs> I guess I am. But they've got this debt clock. I don't know if you've seen this. It ticks and ticks and ticks on, you know, what the debt service is right now. Like it's the a, world's population. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> I'm looking at this thing. It's very, very creative. What they don't um, do is they put, they don't put in there an adjustment for an $8 billion pay down every year. Well, they actually yeah, that, have it. So but kind caller, of, did we uh, completely muddle the water? Or, <laughs> well, no, you know, actually, though, but Sorry. even in that thing, I have read that thing, and, and you know, one of the interesting things about it is they say, well, there's virtually no crime, so let's let's cut the police. <laughs> and what he's supposed to do? Cut it till there's crime, and then right. you know, yeah. it, it really doesn't make a lot of sense. But I mean, what I was talking about historicals is even to look at even property values and things of that nature. What would happen over five to ten years when these infrastructure? But these capital well, projects aren't completed and, and, and things of that nature. And that's a very good point because uh, we've seen this in the past and we have seen this in other communities where when you, and I can only speak to the Board of Education or the educational budget, when you begin to impact the quality of education, when that education falls and falls, and you don't feel it right away but it's going to be stretched out over years, you reduce the demand for homes in your area. When you reduce the demand, you reduce the selling price, therefore you reduce the equity that we all enjoy in Richfield. And that's that's a very serious here's, consideration. Here's, here's the rub on that, though. You don't want to be the town, oh, Ridgefield, that's the town that, you know, didn't pass their school budget. That's the town that doesn't support education. I don't want to know if I want to move my kids into that school system. That doesn't sound right. You don't want that. But you also don't want to be the town that's, hey, that's the town with runaway taxes. That's the town where your taxes keep going up. And either. I think if you look, be a balance. relatively speaking, and we meet once a month in Fairfield County, not everyone, but a good portion, 12 to 13 of the first selectmen and mayors get together. Yeah. No agenda. It's a simple lunch. We all pay our own way. <laughs> uh, last one was in Norwalk, and we started debating. What are you going up? What are you going up? Yeah. And uh, Woody Bliss from Weston was kind enough being a uh, retired IBM employee, did the spreadsheet. Yeah. And when you look, how, where does Richfield fit in? I believe Weston was 2.82. Uh, Wilton was 2.85. Richfield was 3.5, there was another town at 3.7, and the rest went up from there with a high in Reading of 17%. Uh, that way, budget went down. That went down, down. yeah. yeah. Uh, well, I don't think it surprised that anyone. Right. But, but uh, caller, thanks. Did, did we kind of answer your question more or less? No, absolutely, and uh, thank you. Thank All right, you. thanks a lot. Thanks for calling. Uh, yeah, caller, you're on the air. Sorry for the wait. It's okay. Hello? Yes, yeah. you're on the air. We're, All right. We're here to get pummeled, so have at it. Uh, <laughs> Uh, good evening. Good evening. Uh, this is uh, Mike Hagan. Hi, Mike. Uh, I uh, I just want to say a few words on this occasion. This is not the first time that we've had problems with the budget in the town, and the town will not fall apart because of it unless we don't approach uh, the fact that there's an attitude among the taxpayers right now 
Yeah, I'm listening, Mike. You said there's an attitude among the taxpayers? There is an attitude among the taxpayers right now that they are in a hole. Yeah. That a lot right. of things that bad are happening to them, and they don't seem to feel that they're getting a very sympathetic ear from the people that are representing them in terms of uh, the people in town hall and the people uh, on the board of uh, uh, finance. Hey, Mike, can I ask you a question? Uh, you, you, know, you, you have a chance. You've been involved in town government for many, many years, and yeah. I appreciate all your efforts and your volunteerism. What did you feel about the 3.5% mill rate increase? Well, I think that there was too much attempt to make it appear as being just a, a minor deal. It's not minor to the people whose houses are up for foreclosure. It's not minor to the people who are being faced uh, with not knowing how they're going to be able to get to work the next day or something. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are in a hole in the town, and they do not seem to find a sympathetic ear at this time coming out of the government. So I think you're going to have to do things to try to uh, show them that you are, are, are thinking of them. Now, for example, the, that police department deal should have never been put up. There was too much money to be flashing that kind of an expenditure at this time. It, it, it just did not sit well with a lot of people. And right. I know that people uh, have images about how the budget should be and that they don't always have the facts. And I know that there's a whole string of people in town who all are working on trying to give you the best government for the most reasonable amount of money. Mike, but, I, we have I'm one up, minute. Yeah, I'm up against our break. But listen, let me just, in response to what you're saying, this budget voted down, I can speak for myself and most likely Mr. Marconi, is a huge wake-up call. Uh, you have our attention. And, well, and, that, that, okay. that, that's the thing, one thing I want to say tonight. Yeah, and by the way, this television show and having Mr. Marconi be willing to come out on this television show is just another way where he wants to, well, he and myself want to expose ourselves to the public and say we can, uh, we're here and we're listening. They're telling me it's time up. Mr. Marconi, I want to thank you again thank for coming you, Marty. in. We'll be back on the air next Thursday with Ideas of Work and Beyond, okay, 9 to 10 o'clock. Please call back in. Mike, thanks for calling. And uh, appreciate you watching. And uh, come on out to the Board of Finance meeting Tuesday night, the 20th, and we'll take it from there. Good evening and thanks for watching.